On today's Taste Texas, fall is finally in the air, so we're making a visit right, to the pumpkin farm. Tax. He loves pumpkins as much as the rest of us do. Chef Garth is sharing his recipe for a delicious oven roasted pumpkin soup with an Italian homestyle panini. And I'm sharing one of my favorite little recipes too. So pull up a chair and join us at the table. Welcome to Taste Texas. I'm Amy Kushner. And I'm Garth Blackburn. We're so glad to have all of you here today. Thanks for joining us in audience. And as viewers, we're happy to have you. We're going to be making something really fallish today. The weather's turning, and it's time to pull out the pumpkins and roast them and do something fun and tasty with them. What do you got in mind? Right, so we're doing a soup and sandwich, so kind of a great combination, right? Soup and Sammy kind of day? Soup and Sammy, yeah, great for cold weather. Awesome. The pumpkins that we picked out at the pumpkin farm are, uh -huh. are going to be great, really sweet right now. That's right. Uh, but to accent that, we're going to put some sweet potato with it. That'll kind of balance out the soup, and then a little nuttiness, a little bit of spice. It's all going to come together. And the sandwich is just going to be a quick griddled sandwich mm -hmm. with a few veggies and some Texas 1015 onions named after your birthday. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll just put it all together in a plate. It's going to be great. Let's so get, get started. started. Yeah. All right, so the pumpkin, right? We learned a little bit about pumpkins mm -hmm. at the pumpkin farm. These are pumpkins for cooking, so there's a lot more flesh than there would be for a carving pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And I just find that you and I talked about this, that it's, it's really difficult to peel these. So the folks that boil them, there's just so much extra work. If mm -hmm. I roast this whole, mm -hmm. we'll get more caramelization in the oven, and it's just gonna be easier to work with. So let's- Do you need uh, to pull all the seeds out before you roast them? You can do it before them? or after. I find this to be the easiest tool. So if you want okay. to- So you're gonna already put out, me to work already? Put you to work. Yeah, you're, right. you're doing some real work today. You're doing a little garnish for the soup, right? That's right, I got just a little recipe in mind. And so so, you need, so the, do you have to pull these out? Because what if you wanna roast your seeds? You can save those, rinse Wash off them all out. That, okay. that fill. You can drop that on here. I've got two sheet trays. That'll be our trash one. All right. And then I've got some sweet potato, which I find if you do too much pumpkin, if it's very pumpkin heavy, that you're going to end up uh, with just a little bit too much body, not as much sweetness. So okay. sweet potato, balance that out. And we're going to roast these off. Roast them off at 375 degrees for about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the size of the sweet potato and the size of the pumpkin. Is that enough? That looks good. Where do you want that? We're going to lay that right here. And okay. now. You only want a half? That's going to be about the right balance. So I want a roughly two parts sweet potato to one part pumpkin. Okay. And I think that provides the best flavor. Now, this is toasted pecan oil. So you're going to drizzle a little bit of that on. Now I know how you, te okay, you tricked <laughs> no, me the last that's time. That's even more difficult. <laughs> she poured about half a bottle of oil on just by turning it upside down. I put my finger over it this you time, did. so you save the day. Cover. You saved awesome. the day. And that's going to provide some nuttiness. Pecan oil has a fairly low smoke point, so mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't use it to saute the vegetables that are going to go onto our sandwich, but it's going to be great in the oven. Okay. Sprinkle a little bit of kosher salt on there. And you don't have to peel the potatoes either? No, because once they're cooked, we're just going to scrape it out. So we okay. just save 90% of the work when yeah. it comes to dealing with sweet potatoes and with pumpkin. So oil, salt, pepper, and roasted. Right. That's it. That is it. Love that. So while that's going, we're going to go ahead and get ready for the sandwich. We need to mention, what are you roasting those at? 375 degrees okay. for about, depends on the size of the potato, somewhere mm -hmm. between 45 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, you might need to pull the potatoes a little bit early if they're small ones like those. Uh, the, the pumpkin's going to take a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. All right, now to get ready for the sandwich, I want to have all my ingredients ready to roll because we're going to griddle the sandwich. It's a hot sandwich. So the more prep work you can get done early, mm -hmm. the better. So we're True. gonna put you to work with one of your oh, favorite tools. Great, that again. <laughs> that again. I'm gonna have this perfected by the time I've done you're, this at you're least. right on track. You were very impressive with that the last time. Okay, this is an optional ingredient. One of your, I don't know, favorite unusual items, right? So fennel has a, a very, very strong licorice and yeah. nice flavor. Some yeah. people like it, some people don't. I find if you shave it really thin, mm -hmm. that it doesn't become too powerful. So if you True. want to slice that. Mm -hmm. And you have this set at what? <laughs> at nothing, because nothing's happening. There you go, try it out now. 
And I have to watch what I'm doing, otherwise people get scared that I might cut myself. Uh, yeah, like me. <laughs> it okay, has this licorice good. smell. It does. That's, yeah? that's good. Yes, that's awesome. Okay, and so then we're gonna do the same thing with your Texas 1015 sweet onion. Huh? And if y'all didn't hear from the last show, it's called a 1015 because the best time to plant them is on, that's close enough. <laughs> it's on uh, October the 15th, which just so happens to be Amy's birthday as well. That's right. I'm, I was born after a sweet onion. How <laughs> you cool. You were born after a sweet onion. <laughs> what is this? This, this is, is a, a pear. Boss pear. Okay, any way I should hold, any way you can hold it, right? Any just way grab you can it. Hold it. You've been soaking this in water? So if you're gonna peel it early, mm -hmm. you don't want it to turn too brown and oxidize. So I'll put it into water that has a little bit of lemon juice or a little bit of lime juice, and that's gonna keep it from turning brown. So that's and, far enough. And by the way, this is called a or mandolin, if nobody has or hasn't bought one yet. I'm sorry. Well, I was don't talking. A little, I was talking. A little crunchy side, a little bit of texture. So now we've got that <laughs> stuff ready to roll for our sandwich, and we'll uh, take a look at how things finish up in the oven as well. All right, we're just getting started. We have great things to come. Y'all stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> This wonderful things roasting and we're gonna make some sandwiches to go with this pumpkin soup we actually had an opportunity to visit a really cool pumpkin farm and uh, Garth and I got to learn a lot about pumpkins and how they're grown in Texas or not grown in Texas and meet a longhorn and meet a longhorn named tax y'all take a look all right here I'm with tax he loves pumpkins as much as the rest of us do so let's go uh, let's go visit the big orange pumpkin farm here you go tax West Texas is the best area because you've got the dry sandy soil, but especially the arid nights. Uh, the pumpkins will they'll cool down and then they'll keep that coolness throughout the, uh, the afternoon you know, heat. And they uh, just suck up that moisture. Yeah, you've got the sandy soil, good water for irrigation, and the cool nights. And what are the characteristics So, when you're looking for a pie pumpkin versus a carving pumpkin? Well, a, carp, a carbon pumpkin, it, it's obviously, it's gonna be bigger. It's gonna have a thinner wall uh, on it. The pie pumpkin, it's gonna be smaller. It's more compact. It's got a lot of meat on it, which is, you know, what you're, you know, using as your filling when you're cooking with it. Is the pumpkin a fruit or is it a vegetable? Cucurbit, which, you know, depending upon which uh, reference guide you're looking at, most people will call it a fruit. A fruit. A fruit. Because it has a seed, right? It doesn't have to... Yeah, but I mean, to me, you know, it's in the squash family, so squash it kind of feels like a kind of feels a like a veg vegetable. Why well, it's a fruit? Botanically, I would encourage. I had a pumpkin pie last year that someone made with one of the blue Harrodale pumpkins. That was wow. one of the better pumpkin pies that I've tried before. I don't just the texture of the meat. The texture of the meat is a lot. A uh, lot thicker and not nearly as grainy as you get with some of your traditional orange pumpkins. the visits out to these farms and learning about how the the actual fruit is grown right it is a fruit we found that out did you out. know that pumpkins are a fruit and not a vegetable right very cool so we're eating our fruits so let's dive in and get some more cooking done we are so the pumpkin and the sweet potatoes are roasting off right now mm -hmm. we've got our stuff ready to do the griddled sandwich here in a little bit now i'm thinking about the garnish for the soup mm -hmm. and what goes great in fall is a pomegranate so i'm going to show you all a couple ways to clean a pomegranate one more difficult one is just to try and pop the seeds out. Yes, uh, that's what I do. Yeah, not not a very easy task. The other option is to break it apart mm -hmm. while it's in water. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the seeds, you see all the seeds? Put this out here. 
how the seeds are going to the bottom. Yes. And that white pithy part is going to the top. Okay, so oh. that, that'll separate it. That's cool. Okay, and then the much more fun way mm -hmm. is gonna be just to hold it. Can you see the seeds are coming out? Yeah. Is just start hitting the back of it. But then what if you have an accident and you so hit your hand? Oh, well, that's Isn't cool. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Go for it. Oh, you're really going to ask me to do that? Oh, Garth, you know how dangerous I am with oh, a knife. I think sometimes it seems like, because I wear a white chef coat, that it's going to be really difficult. You better stand gonna, back. Let's stand on this side. <laughs> all right, see, I looks... feel all this stuff. Look at that. That's awesome. And if you wanted some of Amy's uh, salt-encrusted pomegranate, <laughs> it's getting a little bit violent there. That's probably enough. Okay, so that's going to be the garnish the for the soup. Almost all the seeds came out. That's a great tip. Thank that's you for be that. That's going to garnish for the soup. I did make a mess, but that's okay. That's what the kitchen's for. That is what the kitchen's for. Okay, now in terms of the timing, for a few minutes I want to start to caramelize mm -hmm. the onions and the fennel and a little bit of the pear. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and saute that. Okay. On this awesome griddle you have. It's awesome giant. And here's how I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to put onion and fennel down first. Why is that? Because they're going to take longer to cook. Okay. So I'll put those down initially. Mm -hmm. Now I'll put our pears down. So the pears are going to slowly cook up there, but they're not going to get quite as caramelized. And if people don't have a griddle at home like this, we could just do a, like a large skillet? You could use a large skillet or okay. a cast iron skillet would great, I was work great ask. as well. Okay. I'm not a big fan of using nonstick for setup like this because the high heat isn't very good for a nonstick And finish. you want to get it kind of crispy on the edges. You want it caramelized. That's the best part because yeah. we're trying to bring that sweetness out. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in the oven versus boiling a pumpkin or a sweet potato. Mm -hmm. That doesn't get as sweet, but the high temperature mm -hmm. creates this caramelization. It's so rich and so full body. Yeah. So now we're doing it with the crunchy side on yes. the sandwich Ooh. and on the creamy side for the soup. And we're going to put that together uh, at the next, uh, next little segment. That sounds good. So I think we need to take another break. We do. Thanks for the good tip on the pomegranate. Absolutely. We're going to put that together good use this year. Okay, we'll be right back with more. All right, so are we about ready to get this pumpkin out of the oven? We are. It's time to make some soup. So we've got the sandwich working. It's time to, uh, to get the pumpkin working. And our sweet potatoes. Yes. So deliciously caramelized. We're going to be scraping the flesh out. Mm -hmm. uh, the other option is, and these are fairly hot, but you can use a towel as well okay. if you need to, and then just pop them in. Make sure to get that, that peel off. And if you'll start scraping the pumpkin, yeah. so just be careful because it's hot. Okay. And there's your spoon. So you just want to get all the inside out, right? You do. So you just take your time, I guess. <laughs> you do you need to take your time. It's still there's a lot of stuff to scrape out of here. It's still a lot less time than having to peel that while it's raw. True. And those are so starchy, you're much more likely to cut yourself as well. Well, I would rather cut a soft pumpkin than a hard pumpkin, and sometimes they're just really hard to get a knife through. So. You've got the system. Is that it? That is good. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of almond butter. You could use peanut butter, but this is a little bit richer, a little bit more full body. Uh huh. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of smoked paprika. So we're going for sweet and spicy and salty and rich. It's all going to come together. The spicy is going to be our red pepper flake. The sweet is going to be our maple I'm still syrup. More. A little bit more pumpkin. And I'm putting about two tablespoons of maple syrup in. Now, when you're shopping for maple syrup, what should the ingredients be on the back of the maple syrup bottle? Maple. Maple syrup, right? <laughs> not high fructose corn syrup and not. Not, you know, all these uh, sodium benzoate. There should be one ingredient. It should be maple syrup. And you get to decide if it's amber or dark amber. If it's a dark amber, it's going to be a little bit more nutty. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is some Texas butter from Lucky Layla Farms right outside of DFW. Where can you get that, by the way? You, actually, most grocery stores now are carrying it. Okay. So I've found it at Whole Foods, at Central Market. Okay. I've found it at a few other grocery stores as well. Costco even sometimes carries it. And then this is going to be some milking. Uh, half and half, or you could use cream. You could use milk as well. This is where the soup's going to get good. <laughs> yeah. Well, cream. Actually, Lots of cream. If you want to go even richer, you could add more cream. Okay. I'm going to use chicken stock to kind of thin it out with. All right. And this is going to be about a cup mm -hmm. of chicken stock. Or two. Or two. <laughs> or add the cream in, in addition. And now we're just going to blend it up. How about 
that. So, or could I use that immersion blender on that thing? You could. It won't be quite as as creamy and smooth. So right. I like that blender. It's faster. That's going to be about four appetizer portions mm -hmm. or two entree portions. I've got right there about a, about a quart. Uh, of soup. So we need the entree portion for sure. We need the entree portion. That's what we're <laughs> going to be firing up today. And to go with it, of course, we've got to have some garnish. You did the pomegranate. Yes. Okay. Here's the greatest show me home, home cook thing. All right. Let me show you. Okay. So all you do is you buy, we're going to make little crackers to go on top of the soup. And you buy already done pie crust, refrigerated pie crust. Okay. Because so, I can't measure because I, I don't make pie <laughs> so crust. So we're not making our own pie crust. And then you want to find like some just little bitty cutters, any kind you can find at the store. I found these. And I haven't seen that at a restaurant supply store. So, so like maybe at a arts and crafts store or like a super store, you know, like Target or something. Any kind of small cookie cutter. And um, you just want to cut out, you know, as many as you can into this pie crust. And then what you do is you, I've already done some right here in this little tray. And you just take an egg and you want to brush, you want to brush the little cutouts with some egg. Okay, this is so simple, like anybody can do this. Pop in the oven um, at 375 for about eight to 10 minutes. Keep okay. an eye on it. When it comes out, put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. Oh, these are so good. Parmesan rice. I, with I can just eat right? these with, with no nothing. And then, like, a little bit of salt. And sometimes I'll do a little bit of pepper. Pop them back in the oven for like two minutes until they get a little bit crispy and the cheese melts down. Pull, pull them out and just hope they make them to your bowl and not just flat off the tray. There's a chance I made a few of those disappear already. I just in my mouth. They're so good. This they is the are. easiest homey tip ever. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic job. Okay. That's going to go great on our soup. And I we'll know. Put it all I can't together. wait to put it together. So we have one more break and we'll do that when we come back. All right, we're back in my home, the Subs Wolf Prep Kitchen, where all the fun happens. And today's five minute meal is going to be a very easy grilled chicken lettuce wrap, a little Asian style. So let's get started. We're going to start with a couple cloves of garlic. I'm going to smash those to release that essential oil, but I'm not going to get pieces of garlic stuck on the outside of the chicken. We put in about two tablespoons of either soy sauce or tamari, which is gluten free, if you want to go the gluten free route about two tablespoons of rice vinegar, a teaspoon of fish oil. You will not taste that. It just adds the depth, the richness. And then, in addition to one of my favorite items, which is a little bit of ginger juice, I'm also today going to be using kiwi fruit, which is a very quick tenderizer. So if you don't have a long time for your, your meat, whether it's chicken or beef, to marinate, then just use the pulp and the juice of kiwi fruit. So this would be two kiwis. Just left the skin on, I'm just squeezing some of the pulp out and the juice. If you leave the meat in for too long, namely more than 30 minutes or an hour for chicken or a couple hours for beef, it'll lose all texture. So keep it less than a couple hours. We'll put in, I'm not a big fan of boneless, skinless chicken breast, but I think with all this additional flavor, we make a, a quick chili garlic sauce that's gonna go on top of it. Wrap that in our lettuce. I think you'll be really impressed. Okay, now it's time to grill the chicken. Got my grill on a high heat because these chicken breasts are very thin. So they'll finish cooking through all the way on the grill. There's no need to heat up your oven. I'm looking at about four to five minutes per side. Turning it once halfway through on each side. Okay, while the chicken is resting, we're gonna go ahead and make a very quick, simple sauce. This is a Thai chili garlic sauce. It's sweet. I like a little bit of sweet heat. This is a spicy Thai chili sauce called Sambala Olik. And then a little bit of acidity from our rice vinegar. So we did about two tablespoons of the sweet and then about a teaspoon each of the vinegar and the spicy. That's our sauce. We're gonna put about half of it on some shredded vegetables. Get that mixed in. Now it's time to slice that chicken. I'm cutting it across the grain so it's gonna be nice and tender. Super juicy, really succulent from that kiwi fruit. We'll stuff each one of our lettuce cups with a little bit of the vegetables, some of the chicken. Top that with some sliced almonds, and then a little bit of chive. 
and we've got some delicious lettuce wraps. Now it's finally time to plate this beautiful soup and Sammy day. Soup and Sammy day. Okay. So we're finishing off the sandwich. We added some soprasada. So crisp that up a little bit. That'll so render the fat out. Say that one more time, just because I'm new to this. What? Soprasada. Say it again. Soprasada. Soprasada. Uh -huh. Soprasada. Say it five okay. times faster. And what is it? Not going to. It's it's basically like a salami, a little bit more flavorful. But by cooking it, I'm rendering the fat out, and so then you you'll just, end up with more crispness. So you just threw it on the grill with that extra oil that was already in there, and just kind of let it that's fry it. up a little bit. Yeah, Nothing else. It. That's it. Easy. And then some Texas goat cheese. Mmm. We're toasting the bread. And uh, while that's finishing up, why don't we go ahead and put our soup together? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Doesn't that look good? Yes. Okay, so that's really like a soup bowl for two. It's a giant portion. It is. So this is some Mexican crema. You can get that at any grocery store in the Mexican cheese section. Or you could put a dollop of Daisy on there. And heck, Daisy, that's a Texas product. That's right. Those and then those the pomegranate and did you do, seeds that you beat the crud out of. <laughs> did you do anything to the pomegranates at all? I, don't, no, I didn't catch that. That was it. That okay. Was it. And then that was toasted pumpkin seed oil, some of our toasted pumpkin seeds. And then it needs the uh, pièce de résistance. That would be your little finisher. Oh, the, the crackers are ready, y'all. That's what oh, he just crackers. said. That's what I meant. Well, can I put them on there? Absolutely. Thanks, Garth. Do you want one? You want to try them? Because normally they don't ever make them off my sh sheet at home. I like three. Okay, I'm gonna do five because mm. you said odd numbers are better, so there's five. Odd well, numbers do look better. <laughs> What'd you say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Got right. that. Let's put it together. All right, so let's put this sandwich together. I'm curious. The che you said goat cheese, grilled onions, grilled fennel, and grilled pear. It's still chewing. And <laughs> is then our, and is then that our cracker too dry? No, it's not dry. Just should, no, I put three of them in my mouth. Oh, at once. okay. Smash that down. I always cut it in an angle. A little bit better uh, appearance on that. Oh my gosh. So How is that for a beautiful awesome. fall recipe? Is that not gorgeous? You can give him a hand. <laughs> it's okay. And her for oh, those yes. crackers. And everyone's going to get a bite of a cracker too, I promise. Garth, this is amazing. May I try? Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Because I'm just. <laughs> that super, is a soap full size sauna. sandwich. Super sada. Super sada. Super sada. <laughs> um, yeah, that's right. Go for it. <laughs> My child, while she's eating that, you can find the recipe on taste te tastetexastv.com. Mm -hmm. Also on social media like Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. A lot of resources to be able to see what we're doing for this week and all our future shows as well. What do you think? This is amazing, and I got to try that soup really quick. Thanks, y'all, for joining us today. We'll see you next week.